Welcome to OnFleet's webinar 101. It's designed to share tips and tricks with you to help you and your organization get set up more quickly and efficiently so you can begin delighting your customers through your last mile delivery program. Okay, so today we're really just focused on the basics. And by way of introduction, hi again, my name is Alyssa Momquist and I am the onboarding success manager here at OnFleet. So that means that I'm really super focused on the first 90 days of the customer journey. Um, I work really closely with our customer success support and engineering teams to help organizations execute a successful delivery program. So you might see as you're getting in the uh, you know, the dashboard yourself that it's pretty easy to set up on fleet, but I'm just really here to share some of those best practices to ensure that you can get up and running immediately. And starting with today's session of basic on fleet 101, um, the goal is by the end of this webinar, you will be ready to complete your first delivery. So as far as an agenda goes for today, we are going to be covering things like a basic dashboard orientation, helping you get kind of uh, familiar with the dashboard functions. We'll take a look at the organization settings and kind of the structure of your organization. Um, we'll definitely cover some basic task creation as well as basic task assignment. Um, I'll orient you with your dashboard filters and search functionality, and then we'll jump into OnFleet chat as well as a basic driver app overview. Okay, so let's get into the dashboard here. So I want to begin with just a little bit of an orientation because this is where obviously once you sign into your OnFleet account, you are presented with this view. So I have some information in my account that you might not, um, things like tasks and teams, which we'll go over momentarily. Um, but first, I just kind of want to point out that we have a different sort of tabbed interface from which you can view all of your information. So we have the map view here with the sidebar over on the right hand side. Um, this is where we are now, but we also have the table view up here. Uh, so clicking through to the tab, you can see um, the same information basically in a different format. Um, finally, you also have the analyze tab, which we're actually not going to cover today, but this is where you can manage uh, different reporting capabilities from your OnFleet dashboard. So going back to the map, um, here you can visualize your entire operations geospatially. So again, it's divided into two sides, the map and the sidebar. And for the most part, the items on the map mirror the same items on the sidebar too. Um, so with the map side, you have basic map controls like zooming in and zooming out. Um, you can even activate like a base map selector like your satellite map or perhaps you want to um, put this transit map as a layer on top of your map. Um, actually, let's do satellite because that always looks so pretty. Um, so getting back to kind of uh, on fleet functionality. So you also see that there are various pins on my map here. Um, so these pins uh, are representing our tasks and they are different colors depending on the different status of the tasks. Um, so a task is the most basic unit of work. In other words, something to do at a destination. So this could be either a pickup or a drop off. Um, and the different statuses are unassigned, assigned, um, completed successfully, which will be represented in green, and a failed completed task, which would be represented in red. Again, the purple, sorry, is assigned, and this gray task down here is unassigned. Um, the drivers are the employees in the field that are doing the pickups and the deliveries, and when they are on duty or logged on, um, they're going to be displayed as a circle indicating their real-time location. So we'll go over that in just a minute when we touch on uh, the mobile app, the driver mobile app. Um, but everything can be viewed, again, visually on the map here. So the sidebar, now the sidebar displays your different teams, your drivers, and tasks in one organized list. So teams sort of have this multiple uh, person icon indicating the team. Uh, drivers here will have a dot icon just like the map and you can see my drivers off duty later when we put this driver on duty that will change. And the tasks have a pin icon just like the map. So here this task has been assigned to this driver and here we have an unassigned task over here. 
So again, touching on the table view, it's the same data in a different structured view of rows with flexible format, um, sort of a flexible table format. So it's especially made for those that have a high task volume operations. Um, it's really easy to uh, take care of bulk actions here. You can add and remove tabs. Um, over on the right hand side and you can even reorder these columns just by dragging and dropping them around in a different format. Um, finally, you can sort these tasks by their column header into either an ascending or descending order and those batch actions like I was talking about, um, selecting the tasks in a range, changing assignment, optimizing, so on and so forth. So really great again for those high volume operations. So now that we are sort of, <clears throat> excuse me, oriented um, with our dashboard, let's jump back into the map, <coughs> excuse me. And we will actually look at um, our organization settings. So setting up the structure for our organization, starting with our people operations. So let's jump into teams here. So what is a team? Um, a team is a way to sort of flexibly group drivers and their dispatchers, um, and it can re represent any sort of organizational unit you like. So many folks like to use teams to represent a store location or a market or geographic area. You can see I have HQ, which represents my San Francisco team. Um, I also have an out of state team here. Um, to represent, you know, sort of a, a different geographic area, um, but you can really use any operational or labor unit you like, like, for example, maybe you have a, a group of sort of contract workers versus employees, um, but just know that drivers can live on one um, sorry, sorry, on more than one team at a time, so they can be on multiple teams. So definitely feel free to get creative with how you decide to structure this. So let's jump into our drivers. Um, so drivers belong on a team, um, but drivers don't have to necessarily be someone with a car. Um, this could be a pedestrian, uh, delivery worker, a bicyclist, a scooterist, a truckist. I don't even think that that's a word. Um, but workers are using the OnFleet uh, via the mobile app to execute and complete tasks that have been assigned to them. So the mobile app is um, supported across both iOS and Android. And when we add them here, um, we're adding them with a phone number. So they are getting an invitation. Oh, that's okay. They are getting an invitation to download and install the mobile app from the App Store. Um, but very important that uh, for your workers or your drivers, this is an invitation only. So you're adding them into the organization settings using their phone number here. Okay, so let's talk about dispatchers next. So dispatchers are our dashboard users who view and or manage drivers and tasks for the assigned teams that they are a part of. So uh, they can be assigned to more than one team, just like drivers. Um, so for example, a dispatch or a dashboard user might be a driver manager, a route planner, or a customer service agent or something like this. Um, important to know that you can also add these dispatchers as read-only access. So um, for those that do have read-only access, maybe it does not, uh, their day-to-day -day requirements, their day-to-day uh, requirements don't uh, have them needing to add or update or delete drivers or tasks for their assigned team. They just need to be able to look at the information. So an example of that would be uh, sort of your customer care or your customer service team uh, that might need access to the dashboard. Okay, so that sort of covers our people operations and the structure of the organization. Um, I forgot to mention too, if you guys do have questions while I'm going through this, feel free to chat them in or use the Q&A section of uh, the Zoom webinar um, and I'll try to get to them. If I don't get to them right away, um, I'll open it up for questions at the end. Okay, so we looked at the dashboard views. Um, we've even invited some others for our organization. So now I just wanna move on to kind of the operations aspect of creating and managing your tasks. 
So again, those tasks are uh, the core unit of work to be completed by a driver. Tasks represent either a pickup or a drop off. And there are uh, many different ways actually to create tasks in Envoy. You can do this one by one in a bulk or batch import, um, but probably the most favored way of getting this information into Onfleet is programmatically using an integration. Um, but that's sort of advanced stuff. So for today, we're going to teach you how to sort of walk before you run. So we're going to cover um, creating tasks one by one and also via a bulk import. So let's start with one by one. So um, let's cover some of those options here. So first, you can create a task by clicking this uh, check button up here at the top of your bar. And this opens up a new task modal where we are filling out some information. So there are some required fields that you'll need to input. Um, those required fields, there's three. Um, recipient information, so the phone number and name. Um, perhaps there isn't a recipient, that counts too. So you can just uh, enter, you know, click this box if there is no recipient. Um, and then selecting the task type, so whether it's a pickup or a drop off. Um, and then the final sort of required field is the destination. So obviously we need to know where we are picking something up or dropping something off. So those are the required fields. Again, recipient, uh, the type of task, pick up or drop off, and as well, the destination. So we also have lots of optional fields. So things like recipient notes, uh, task details, even a delivery window, if we want to create a delivery window using this complete after and complete for. So what this means is complete after, if we put in a time and a date, um, this is the time after which the driver can start a task. And the complete before is the time a task must be completed before. So by using both, we are simply uh, choosing a start and end time of this delivery window. So this is the task uh, modal that we're entering in this information. We can even assign the task right here. Um, you can also use the keyboard shortcut T, just using the key T, typing it T, to open up the task modal. Um, and finally, you can even create a, da a task from the map um, by sort of right clicking your mouse. Uh, you can create a new task here. Okay, so those are some of the keyboard shortcuts that we have. Don't worry, you don't have to remember all of these. You can always access the keyboard shortcuts um, by clicking the little question mark here um, and the hotkey guide will open up all the different hotkeys that we have. Um, I've just shown you sort of the create task hotkeys. So now that we've created a task, I want to also show you how you can do a bunch at once. So a great way of getting a bunch of data into your account all at once is to simply use our import, um, our batch import option up here. So using this adjacent icon to import your tasks, you can also do the keyboard shortcut I, the letter I, to open up your import task area. So a great uh, sort of resource for you is our support center. Um, just in general, we have lots of amazing articles. Um, but for this particular one, we also have uh, an example import sheet that you can download and use for yourself. Um, it's a Google Doc, so um, if you're not a Google user, um, you can you know, import this information from Excel. Um, it just has to be a CSV, but you'll see that we have the required fields highlighted in red at the top, the optional fields kind of highlighted in gray below it. Um, so definitely great. I'm going to use um, my file that I have already created and import this in. So in this area, you are simply mapping each column to the corresponding field in Onfleet. Um, if, when, if and when you are doing this for the first time, you'll need to actually map each column. Um, but these mappings are sticky, so um, they've remembered my settings from the last time I did this, which is actually very, very nice. So um, the only thing that I need to change here is my timestamp and my time zone. So let me just select those and I can simply import the file um, depending on how large the file is. This might take a couple of minutes or a moment. Um, looks like for me, it's going to take a couple moments. 
Um, but assuming that there aren't any issues with my import file, I should be able to uh, review this and import. Yep, great. So 22 tasks have been created as soon as I hit this done button. Um, they should populate on my dashboard and they were all unassigned. So they are now all represented with little gray pin markers on my map and over here on the sidebar under the unassigned sort of bucket here. Okay, so now that we have a bunch of these tasks created, let's see about actually assigning them to drivers for completion. So for today's purposes, again, we're gonna focus on really the manual way of assigning these tasks. Please note that this can be done programmatically using an integration or even using OnFleet smart assignment options like route optimization or auto assignment. Um, if you'd like to learn more about the route optimization or auto assignment, feel free to you know, check out our support center. Um, I will also go through this in more detail next week um, on the 15th for our OnFleet 102 advanced webinar. So definitely join us then if you're curious about route optimization or auto assignment. Uh, but let's cover kind of the manual ways here. So just as you thought, there's going to be three different places where we can assign these tasks. We can do it from the map, we can do it from the sidebar, and we can also take care of this from the table, from the table view. Remember over here where our bulk actions kind of live. Um, so let's start with the map. Um, you can double click an unassigned task and simply edit it. And as I showed you in the task modal, you can assign it straight to a driver or to a team. Um, and save it. Um, you can also do this within sort of a map region, um, which we like to refer to as a lasso. So to lasso, you can simply shift and click to change your mouse into this little kind of uh, bullseye target looking thing. And then um, while you hold down command, you can sort of like make this polygon around you know, a selection of tasks that we want to uh, perhaps take an action with. The tasks will highlight over on the sidebar. We can then drag and drop them onto a driver or a team to take care of that assignment. Um, we can also do this one by one on the map by choosing one of the tasks. You'll see it highlights on the sidebar. And then by holding down command, we can then click on another task and sort of select those ones that we had sort of randomly with the lasso plus a couple additional others. And then again, um, we can drag and drop. Um, we can do this on the sidebar just kind of like you saw by selecting them. Maybe we want to select in a range. If we just hold down the shift button, then we can select you know, all of them in a range. Um, we can also do control A if we want to select all of the tasks living in a certain sort of bucket. So that's an option as well. Um, and again, don't feel like you have to remember all of these. You can always find our keyboard shortcuts again in our hotkey guide just by clicking that question mark. Um, but probably the best way to take care of these in a bulk fashion would be from the table. And again, sort of filtering our uh, table view and uh, clicking our title here to, to change these into an ascending order, I can select, you know, a number of these and simply change the assignment manually here to a driver or a team. Um, those are our options there. Okay. So, um, and also worth mentioning, if you have tasks selected and you want to sort of back out of this action, all you have to do is hit the escape button or if you're in the table, uh, this deselector up here to remove sort of the selection. All right, so we've covered a lot of different ways to assign tasks to drivers, but what if you have multiple teams, a ton of drivers, a ton of tasks, um, well, I want to give you some tools to help you sort of move easily around all of this data and looking at sort of our filters and our search um, functionality next. So let's start with our filters. So our filters live down here in the lower left hand corner of our dashboard um, and dashboard filtering is exactly what it sounds like. It allows dispatchers or dashboard users to quickly hone in on only the activities that they are interested in seeing. So uh, the filter settings will be across both the map and table view. So if you're setting your filters, just be aware that uh, both places are going to be changing. 
um, your date and your time filter is uh, sort of selecting a single day and time to visualize on the dashboard. So by default, the date and time filter will be set to the current day for monitoring your real time operations. But you could always jump back in time and sort of see what was looking like, you know, last week. Um, probably not a lot on my dashboard, um, but so let's get back to today. Um, we also have the ability to filter by our people operations. So by our teams, if we only care about looking at sort of the operations of one team versus the other, or maybe all of them. Um, we also have our task and driver statuses. So if we only want to see um, those tasks that have been assigned um, or unassigned, we can just you know, sort of remove some of these filters to show us that view. Now, same, same, but different. Um, search allows you to globally, and in the last 30 days, um, find matching tasks, uh, recipients, and drivers. So those, our search field lives up here, just on the top of the sidebar here. And we can do a couple of different search queries. So we accept natural language queries. So first being sort of like text-based. So you can use a text search using keywords from tasks like address or notes. So if I wanted to type in an address here, I can pull up all of the sort of information tasks for this particular address and the recipient happens to be me. Um, you can also search recipient information. So if I wanted to search that same recipient, um, but not by location, in fact, by uh, sort of the recipient name, um, I see that information here. Um, let's use a different example that isn't me because <laughs> that was confusing with drivers and recipients. So Jesse, for example, we have tasks for Jesse. We also have this recipient. Um, finally, you can also text, or I'm sorry, you can also use a state-based Query. So um, if we wanted to look at all of our failed tasks, for example, I could pull up that information and it'll, um, the data will cross both, you know, the task information as well as any recipients with unsuccessful tasks. So pretty helpful, uh, pretty powerful and handy there are sort of filters and search functionality. Um, so let's uh, take a little step into our communication. Um, so I want to discuss on fleet chat, which will be sort of your internal communication tool, um, being allowing you know your workforce to communicate amongst each other. Um, super easy and convenient. You can message you know through the dashboard to the mobile app and from the mobile app to the dashboard. So chat um, from the dashboard perspective lives all the way over on the opposite side. Um, the left hand bar here. So to start a new conversation, you simply just click this chat icon. Um, if I had uh, sort of drivers online, I would be able to see that with a green ring around my driver. I don't actually, but I could initiate a private one on one conversation with an individual driver or dispatcher um, or both. So I could reach out to a combination of both, thus creating sort of like this group chat. Um, so let's show you what that looks like. I can rename this group chat, like maybe this is for my HQ team announcements. And I can say, hey, everyone. And that message would go to everyone involved in this group chat. So also what's really nice is uh, I can attach sort of an attachment to this announcement, this message. Um, drivers can also uh, attach images and or send voice notes through chat. So it goes both ways. Um, but again, really handy to not have to leave the dashboard. I'll show you sort of the view from the driver perspective um, in just a moment. In fact, I think we're already there. So yeah, so we've assigned some tasks. Um, we've moved around the dashboard easily while communicating with our workforce. So now I just want to take a teensy step into our driver's shoes and show you how easy it is to actually get a delivery done. Um, before I do that, it uh, looks like I only have one task assigned to my driver. So I'm just going to actually assign a couple more. So it looks a little bit more interesting. Um, so again, just a reminder that access to the OnFleet driver app is by invitation only when you are adding your drivers. Um, that's when they get the SMS notification to download and install the app. Once they do that, um, they will be brought to the mobile app. So over here, we're looking at um, an iPhone simulator. And the first thing that they'll need to do is go on duty. 
So once they go on duty, um, they are presented with their task view. Um, they are looking at all tasks. They can also toggle to see just today's tasks. Um, and a couple of things are happening that I just want to point out before we um, really focus on the driver app. Like I mentioned, um, the driver sort of uh, bubble indication turns green, showing me that this driver is online. So this is real time location. And we have these um, tasks that have been assigned to this driver that are also represented in their mobile app. Um, so really easy to get started. All they have to do is click on the task and then they are brought with the task details. When they're ready to get started, simply hold down the start button. Um, that's okay. So we had a time window set up uh, that this task should not be completed until two. Um, that's just a soft warning for today's demo. I'm just going to start the task. And some things are happening. So I see that my driver has turned to blue, indicating that they are in transit. Um, we have some ETAs available to us, uh, sort of an estimated um, completion of our tasks. The task on the map has turned blue, telling me that that is in progress. Uh, I drive to my location, maybe I need to navigate here as a driver, depending on um, what this driver's preference is for navigation, maybe it's Apple Maps or Google Maps, um, what have you. But let's just pretend I get to the destination, I complete the task, I'm ready to just tap to complete. Now I have the option to enter in any sort of proof of delivery. Some of these things could be required too. So again, if you're looking to learn more about proof of delivery options, join us next week um, where we talk about some of those. And I just need to say if this task is completed successfully or fail. Um, if that for whatever reason I'm unable to complete this delivery, I have the option to enter in a failure reason um, with some notes. So just know that, you know, sort of operationally, you do have that ability and flexibility. So let's just successfully complete it. All I have to do is hit done and other things happen. Um, that task goes away from my list as a driver and I'm ready to move on to the next. Okay, so yeah, that's really the basics today. Um, one more mention, uh, chat over here for my driver. Uh, here I have that announcement that was sent from the dispatcher and I can always respond back like, it's going great. It is going great. So I can send that back and my dispatcher gets that notification back on that, except that I can't spell <laughs> on that group chat. Um, awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, that was really on fleet 101 basics in a nutshell. I do want to allow for any questions that you have. Um, feel free to use the Zoom webinar chat or the Q&A area.